Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today we are going to look at seven different ways to use your coordinating dies that coordinate with all of your stamp sets. We pick these up and we know that we can die cut our stamped images, but there are so many other ways that you can use these that I wanna go through those with you today. So I'm gonna be making five different cards featuring these different techniques, and we're gonna start out with this Hey You stamp set. I'm using a clear alignment grid to help me place that in the center of my A2 size card panel, so it measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And once I get that where I want it, I'm gonna use the lid of my Misty to pick up that stamp, and then I'll remove that clear alignment grid. I'm going to ink up this stamp using some Versamark ink and stamp it onto my white cardstock panel. And then I'm gonna take it over and add some white embossing powder over my stamping, and then I'm gonna heat set this. So this is gonna give me a tone on tone white image, but the point of this is that it's going to resist the ink that I'm going to stamp on top of it. So you can see it here kind of shining in the light as I tip it up for you. Once I have that heat set, I'm going to replace this back into my Misty, and I'm gonna use the Bold Hey You stamp to stamp right over this. I'm gonna be doing an ombre stamping technique with this, so I'm gonna start by inking up the stamp using Concord and Ninth Nectar ink, and then I'm gonna stamp that right over the embossing that I just did. And you'll see that as I add the ink, the white embossing is going to resist the ink that I'm placing on top of it. Now I went ahead and stamped that and I wanted to create kind of an ombre effect. So I am grabbing my Concord and Ninth grapefruit ink and a blending brush and I'm adding this to the lower like two thirds of the stamp set. And then I'm going to stamp it again right on top of all of that ink that I already have down. And then I'm going to repeat the process by adding a little more grapefruit ink just to kind of build up that color. And then I'm gonna finish off my ombre color scheme with a little bit of Concord and Ninth Sorbet ink at the bottom. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is how to know if your embossing powder is all the way melted when you're working with a tone on tone like I am here, so white embossing powder on a white cardstock. And really, it's important that you just tilt it into the light so that you can see when that embossing powder turns shiny and smooth. You don't want it to look granulated at all, and you want it to be nice and shiny. Now, once I have all of my stamping done, I'm using a microfiber cloth to pick up any excess ink that's sitting on top of my embossing powder, and I'm quickly going to hit that just lightly with the heat tool again, just to bring back a little bit of the shine. Sometimes it can get a little dull when you're doing all that stamping over it. You don't wanna remelt it, but you definitely wanna just hit it quickly with your heat tool. Now I'm taking the coordinating Hey You die and a panel of white cardstock. This is just a scrap piece of cardstock here. It's not my expensive stuff. And I'm gonna run this through my Platinum 6 die cutting machine to die cut this from the panel. Now I am using this as a jig to help me place my die over the stamping that I just did. So you're gonna see I've cut down this panel so that I can kind of work around it. I've lined it up with the stamping that's on my cardstock piece and I've held it in place with some low tack tape and then I slipped the die right into that opening of the die cut piece. It kind of locks in, you'll feel the edges kind of slip into that cardstock. And then when I run it through my die cut machine, I have a perfect cut of that stamping that I just did. So obviously, Coordinating dies are meant to coordinate with the stamped images, so they're great for die cutting these images. And that leads you to a whole nother realm when you're creating. And so we're gonna go through some of the different uses for these coordinating dies and different techniques that you can do when you have coordinating dies for your stamp set. So I've also created a panel of Nectar cardstock from Concord and Ninth, and I have die cut that Hey You from the center of it. And then I'm gonna flip it over and add some foam adhesive to the back of this panel. The first technique that we're doing is to use a coordinating die to create a recess on your card. 
So you can see I have this negative space. I'm placing it over another plain piece of nectar cardstock that's a little bit smaller than my A2 size card front panel. And then I am going to add some liquid glue into those openings and place the die cut letters into those openings. And this is creating a recess. Now this is one of the many ways that you can add dimension with coordinating die cuts. Now if you didn't want there to be a recess, you could skip the foam adhesive on the back of this and you could still inlay those stamped letters and that would give you a die cut inlay instead. It's a very cool effect. Both of them are really fun to do, but you can see how those letters are kind of recessed back from my card panel. And I did go in and add the inner parts of the O and the B and the D to create that dimension in the center of the letters as well. That part's kind of optional. I finished off this card by stamping and die cutting a few balloons from the Peekaboo Friends stamp and die set and that finishes off my first card. Now for cards two and three, I'm actually going to use the same layout for both of them. And I'm using this painted floral stamp set from the Essentials by Ellen line along with its coordinating dies to create number one, masking, but also a debossed image around my stamped images and a hot foil line around my stamped images. So starting off with masking, I have stamped this floral onto my card fronts. I'm using the same inks that I used before. And now I am die cutting that coordinating shape from some Gina K masking magic paper. So this is technique number two is masking with dies. Now I will be honest, when you're gonna mask using a coordinating die, you're not going to get stamping all the way up to the edge of the previous image. If you wanted to do that, you would need to fussy cut it. But in this case, I think it's really nice to have that little bit of a white outline around this stamped image because of the techniques that I'm doing. So I'm just going to continue creating my scene here using this beautiful painted florals stamp set. It has some great layers and I'm also adding in a few little dots using some honeycomb ink and that stamp is from the organic element stamp set from the Essentials by Ellen line. Now you can see when I remove my masks from these images, I have a really nice clean look. I have that little bit of a white outline and none of the green, blue, and yellow ink overlapped with my beautiful nectar floral that I had underneath. Now on this first panel, I'm going to create a debossed effect using the universal platform system for the Platinum 6 and the coordinating die. So I'm just following the instructions on this universal platform. I'm starting with my A plate and then my B plate. And then I have my paper and I have the die facing up into the E plate, which is the silicone mat. I'm finishing my sandwich off with the D, which is the adapter plate. And then I'm running that through my Platinum 6 die cutting machine. Now you can do this with other die cutting machines as well. You just need to follow the instructions for embossing with a die. So that gives me a really cool debossed effect. It almost makes the flower look like it has some dimension behind it because everything else is kind of recessed around it. Now for this next panel that I created, I am going to do foiling with a die. Now you are going to use the same setup that you would use with a hot foil plate. You're just using your die instead. Now when I'm foiling, I like to always remember that the dull side of the foil will always face my paper. So if you're building your sandwich on your actual work surface and not your platform itself, that can be something helpful to use. I have placed that onto my heated up glimmer platform, set the timer. Once the timer is done, I am going to go ahead and add my shim and my spacer pad and run that right through my platinum six die cutting machine which is going to add pressure and you're going to see when i remove this die i have this really fine foiled line around my stamped image now keep in mind that dies are meant to cut not really to foil so the lines that you get when you're foiling with a die are really fine details they're not really thick and wide but you can see the two panels that I've created here, one with the debossing 
on the left hand side and the other with that beautiful foil outline. I went ahead and put these together into cards using the Positive Vibes stamp set and coordinating sentiment strips die. And I just popped those up onto a nectar card base from Concord and Ninth. Some beautiful, simple cards with some fun techniques. Now the first card featured recessed images. This time we're going to use coordinating dies to create extra die cuts to add dimension to our stamped images. I'm starting out with the Strawberry Field stamp set here. I'm stamping this image in some nectar ink and then adding a little bit of grapefruit ink along the bottom and softening that line with my blending brush. And then I'm going to ink up the stems using some lemongrass ink stamp that down and then I've added some avocado ink onto the stems again and soften the line with a mini blending brush from Pink Fresh Studio. Now I'm going to line up the coordinating die and send this through my die cut machine to die cut my image and you can see I have a beautifully die cut image. This never gets old by the way. <laughs> and then I'm going to cut three extras from some plain white cardstock and these are going to provide dimension behind my die cut image. Now this is a really cool effect because it almost creates like a faux chipboard and it's great for kind of intricate dies that are hard to place foam adhesive on the back of, but also this just really helps to give things weight and you can add as few or as many layers as you want to create the dimension. So you can see I built up those strawberries by gluing the layers together behind the stamped image. I've placed this onto a panel that I've stamped with some elements from the Organic Elements stamp set from the Essentials by Ellen Line. Finished it off with a sentiment strip from the Positive Vibe stamp set. And now we are ready to move on to technique number six, and that is use your coordinating dies to create a window on your card. So I'm using the Pressing Thoughts stamp set and I am stamping this in black ink onto a card front. Now keep in mind this is a folded card base, not just a panel. So once I have it stamped onto the card front, I'm going to go ahead and open the card and stamp it on the inside of the card as well. The stamped image on the front of the card is going to provide a guide so that I can line up my die and make sure that when I die cut the image from the card front, that the image inside the card will show through. And a misty stamping tool is really helpful for this. Now I've gone ahead and stamped on the inside of the card, and then I've cut some strips of colorful cardstock from Concord and Ninth, and I'm just gluing those at an angle across my card front. And once I have those glued down, I will go ahead and align my coordinating die and hold it in place with some low tack tape and then I'm gonna make sure that I open my card base before I send it through my die cut machine. I only wanna cut the card front, not the image inside the card. So it's important to make sure that you open that card base before you die cut it. So that creates a perfectly placed window on my card front and that image is stamped inside the card. Now for the seventh and final technique, I wanted to share stamping with fun foam. Now this is craft foam that you can get at any big box store and it die cuts and stamps much better than you would expect. I'm using my normal die cutting sandwich to die cut this pressing thoughts die from the fun foam. I'm gonna run that through, like I said, it's just my regular die cutting sandwich. And then I'm going to remove that from the negative portion. And I'm gonna line it up with the stamped image that is inside of this card that I just created. Now, in order to get this to stick to my Misty stamping tool, I'm gonna have to use a little bit of tape runner adhesive to hold it to the lid. But you can see I've aligned it with the stamped image that's already there. I've added a little bit of tape runner and then I'm gonna close the lid of my Misty to pick up that foam stamp. Then I am going to ink this up with some Nectar ink from Concord and Ninth and stamp it directly over the image that I've already stamped. Now this is going to give one solid color over the entire stamped image and a little bit beyond the border as well, just like the masking kind of went outside of the border of the stamped lines, this is going to give you that same effect. You're gonna get color 
all the way to the edge and a little bit outside of the border. But the great thing is this foam stamps beautifully, it cleans up beautifully, and you can stick it in the pocket with your Stampin' die set and use it over and over again. So here's a look at the fifth completed card. It has that really cool window on the front as well as that stamped image on the inside with that color that I stamped using the fun foam. And that wraps up my seventh and final technique for using your coordinating dies with your stamped images to kind of change things up and stretch your supplies and get different looks. Now keep in mind there are so many other techniques that you can do with your coordinating dies. This does not even scratch the surface. There are so many possibilities. Think partial die cutting or adding action with a specialty die or an action wobbler. Those are all possibilities when you have these coordinating dies that coordinate so beautifully with your stamp sets. I would love it if you would leave a comment below and let me know which of these seven techniques is your favorite to do with your coordinating dies, or maybe it's a technique that I didn't even mention in this video. Let me know in the comments below. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in these projects in the video description, so be sure to check there if you're looking for something in particular. I am so glad you stopped by to hang out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here so you don't miss any of the paper crafting and card making video tutorials. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.